Hi friends, I'm Jess and welcome to the Hex Library where I post reading, writing, book, and planner related content a couple of times a week. Today is going to be my Library Explorer vlog number two. If you missed episode one, I will link it down below. Essentially prior to last month, I had not been to the library for a really long time. We're talking probably over a decade. And so I was interested in trying to um, do a little more of that and was challenged by Leandra at Leandra the TBR Zero, who I'll link down below, to kind of make a vlog of it, of doing trips to my local library, picking out books, reading them. So that's what we're doing this year. My original attempt was to do one a month, but so far February didn't go the best, but it is currently March 4th and I'm filming the second one. So I'm not like at the end of March, it's a possibility that there may be another one sometime this month. Um, because at this point, while I'm standing here, as per usual, the video is done. I've done all of the work. Now we're just filming an intro because who films an intro before they've actually done the rest of the video? I don't know anyone who does that. That's weird. You don't do that, do you? When you vlog, you don't film the vlog of the beginning of the vlog at the beginning, do you? Just me. Okay, so um, yes, at this point I have went to the library. I've picked out the book. I took my phone with me to the library, so there should be some shots. We'll insert all of those right now. So I went to the library 
fairly early. They opened around nine o'clock and I was there about 9, 10, 9, 15. Um, I had some other errands that I had to run that morning um, in places that opened at like eight o'clock. So I went and got those errands done and then went to the library. I was there very early. So there was like no one upstairs. So there were some rooms that I was able to go into and film in that I hadn't been able to in the first episode. I was able to go into the children's room because I really didn't want to film in there if there were kids in there. I know I can blur out their faces, but I don't want to film in the children's room if there are little kids in there. Um, and then also in the like research library where it's mostly um, nonfiction, uh, magazines, old texts, um, encyclopedias, etc. And there's a bunch of like seating space in there, but there was a whole bunch of people in there the first day I was there and I didn't want to film in there that day either. This day when I went, there was no one there. Um, so I was able to film some different things so you could see some more parts of the library than what you normally do. Um, and you did get to see the book that I ended up picking out during that bit and it was Totally Psychic by Bridget Martin. Um, I'm just gonna read the synopsis to you here and uh, then we'll talk about the book. Paloma Ferrar is psychic. In fact, everyone in her family line has the gift. Now that Paloma has come into her power, she dreams of being a famous medium to celebrities just like her beloved abuela. When Paloma's parents move them from Miami to Los Angeles, she hatches a plan to get her career as a medium up and running, host seances at her new school, and stream on social media, build her profile, and make a name for herself, avoid detection from her tattletale of a little sister. But when a reading gone awry leaves Paloma in a sticky situation with a new friend, she'll need more than a crystal ball to find her way out of this mess. You guys know I like witchy stuff. You guys know I like mid-grade. This is really the first book that like jumped off of the the shelves at me other than a few books that were parts of series and I think I mentioned that when I first started talking about this book being the one that I picked out in the first clip that you'll see here shortly. Um, most of the books that I was like oh that looks super interesting it would be like the second or third book in a series and then the library didn't have the first book in the series. Um, but there were some that I really liked, so I did put the books on hold. They are available in other libraries, so I'm waiting for the library to contact me that those are available. Um, and then I'm gonna read those because I'm super excited about the one. It looks super interesting. Um, but we went with Totally Psychic. And actually, while I was uh, reading this on Sprints the other night, our wonderful friend Lindsay Puckett said, hey, I just realized the cover artist for that is the same as the cover artist for my books. So I went ahead and pulled Lindsay's books down too so you can see the similarities as far as like the artwork, you can definitely tell. And maybe that's why I jumped to pick it up. Like why maybe that's why it jumped off the page at me because it is so similar to Lindsay's books as far as like just artwork style goes because it is the same artist. Um, but I, I really love the cover of this one. So we're gonna go back in time um, where I have a couple of updates and then we'll come back to now and we'll give it a wrap up and give you the outro. First impression after reaching the end of the first chapter. I really like Paloma. She is super fun and quirky so far. The story opens up with her abuela doing a reading for a famous client that she has. It is discussed that Paloma has just recently came into her powers within like a month or so. And so she is kind of like watching her abuela give these readings and she's trying to help her grandmother interpret it when she's really just supposed to be sitting and observing. And her abuela gets kind of angry about it. We'll see where chapter two goes. I do really like it so far. Um, I know that there's like a hope that the main character has that Paloma has just from this first chapter. I don't know based off of the synopsis that that's not going to happen um, and I feel like we're going to learn that very soon but I'm enjoying it so far I like the main character Where I was at the middle of the book was I was enjoying it, but it was not like, it's not my favorite mid-grade ever. And I think that's still pretty much where I stand. I ended up at a 4.25 out of five stars, which is a fantastic rating. Um, what kept this from being a five star for me was the characters in the world building. I liked Paloma. I won't say I liked her little sister Magdalena because she was kind of a brat. Nope, she was actually just a brat. Uh, but her character was well done. And same with her parents, they were well done. And we've seen some of them, her mother more so than her father. 
Um, but her friends that we were with a lot during the book, they're really, I, I can't remember any of their names. And they were all so similar that you couldn't really decipher one from the other, other than one specific friend. He's the only boy and he's also a ghost. So it's pretty easy to tell which friend he is as opposed to the rest of them. Um, and as for the world building, it's, it's kind of explained that like, the world obviously knows that her grandma's a psychic, but like, do people actually believe that? Is it a real thing in this world? Do people just believe in psychics or not believe in psychics? And like her entire family has it, but it's, there is a family tree in here and it does state, um, like the relationship and their, um, like their main specialty because everyone's a psychic, but then they also have a specialty. So Paloma is a psychic, but her specialty is floral. So like she gets, can see flowers and things that, um, and then uses like flower language in order to help her figure out what those flowers are supposed to mean. So like Gloria, who's her abuela is just a psychic medium and her mom is a florist because her mom doesn't have the powers. Um, her dad's a chef. Her grandpa is a chef. Her abuelito is a chef. Um, and then she has one, two, three, four. Yeah. Three uncles and an aunt. She's got an uncle who's a numerologist, an aunt who's an astrologist, an aunt who's a dream analyst. And, and then there are two uncles, Julian and Raul, who are animal psychics. Um, so they like can they help people find their lost animals. There's a couple of cousins in here, Gerardo and Dania. Um, but like, I don't feel like that. <laughs> I mean, yes, that's helpful for kids because it's, a, you know, it's a big family. Um, but it didn't really add to the world building any. And I know that this is for kids and that kids don't need complex world building. But I feel like even just a couple of sentences here or there could have fleshed things out a little bit more for me um, and made things more realistic. Um, still a fantastic book. I really enjoyed it. I do recommend if, if you like mid-grade or if you have a mid-grade reader in your life who likes things about um, psychics or ghosts or just paranormal things because I did have a good time. I did enjoy it. I do think the main kind of overall theme of the book is um, listening to your elders and, and kind of like learning that they have Though their rules may not make sense, they do usually have your best intentions at heart when they make those rules. And also um, helping people for the sake of helping people and for doing good rather than um, being like appreciated for doing good. So like not doing things for your own personal gain, like helping these people through connecting them to their loved ones rather than like getting famous for doing that, just doing it for the sake of helping them. I did cry when I read this book. There was a scene we talked about earlier that I did cry. Um, so it did get a bonus point for that. Um, and it was just, a super cute story and I really enjoyed it. That is going to be it for me today. Uh, if you have an idea of like a theme that I should use for the next library explorer, because at this point um, I went in the first time and I just wanted to find like a book I had never heard of. And so that was when I picked up um, whatever the first book was that I can't remember the name of right now. Um, <laughs> I enjoyed it. It was my favorite book of January. Do I remember the name of it? No. Um, I went in looking for something I'd never heard of. And this month I went in trying to look for like displays because uh, someone in the comments and I, uh, forgive me, I don't remember who it was. If I can find the comment, I'll put it over here. Uh, mentioned that they, um, they put a lot of work into like their displays. And so they, you know, would like to see me pick one from a display. And that was my intention going in this month. But really the only thing that was in there was like new releases. And I don't really feel like that's a display per se. Um, some of the end caps had displays, but they were like great Christian books to read and things that were just were not going to be a thing that I was going to read. Um, so I didn't like see any good displays that were like something that really pulled to me. Um, Totally Psychic was on an end cap and was facing front, but it wasn't necessarily a display. But if you have any idea for uh, themes, if you have like, if you would like me to try like a fantasy book or a sci-fi or a mystery or romance or like some specific area of the library you would like me to pick from, uh, leave those down below in the comments. And if you made it this far, leave me a kitty cat emoji because Raja is laying right there in my chair while I film. I just seen Merlin walk by the door, which is good because I thought she had run away earlier because I left the door open and I couldn't find her and I just seen her 
walk by the door so I guess she didn't run away. That's a good thing. Uh, that is all I have for today. Don't forget before you run away to hit the like button if you liked it and subscribe if you want to see more. And until then, I will see you guys next time. Bye!